Welcome back to the McGregor Fence Video Guide. In this video, we will demonstrate how to put up your fencing materials onto your posts and top wire. To do this, you will need a roll of fencing, a hog ringer, hog ring staples, a mallet, preferably rubber, a short step ladder, ground stakes, zip ties, and a pair of wire cutters. To begin, roll out your fencing along the ground at the foot of your fence. Cut your fencing to the appropriate length using your wire cutters. Make sure to leave at least 6 inches on either side so that you don't come up short. Decide which end will be your anchor end. Zip tie the fencing to the brace band on your anchor end. Next, attach zip ties to the top wire all along the top of your fencing. Do not attach to any more brace bands or posts. In fact, make your zip ties as far from them as possible. This is because the fencing will need to be pulled taut and zip ties attached to posts cannot slide down the wire. Now that your fence is more or less hanging, go back to your anchor post and attach the fencing all of the way down the post. Be sure to leave enough fencing at the bottom to create your 6 inch flap. The fencing can protest a bit at this stage, but put it in its place regardless because it will soon be pulled tight. Attach fencing to your round posts with 7 zip ties, angle iron posts with 5 zip ties, and wood posts and trees with 5 u-nails. Once your anchor post is fully secured, set up your step ladder at the next post down. Pull the top of the fencing so that it is straight, but not under extreme tension. Attach it to the post's brace band using a zip tie. Put on the remaining six zip ties, being sure to keep the fencing straight and tugging it downwards to make it smooth. Your final zip tie or staple should go on just above where the fence hits the ground. This will help you form your flap to a 90 degree angle rather than a sloping curve. If you are using angle iron posts, you already have a zip tie in your top hole and cannot fit another. Instead, zip tie the fencing to the loop on the existing zip tie. If you are using a wood post, then you will put a second one and a quarter inch u-nail just next to the first which holds both top line and fencing material. When putting in your u-nails it is important not to pinch the fencing. This can create weak points causing it to break. Make sure that your fencing can move behind the nail. Like always, trees are the same as wood posts, except that you will use a larger 2 inch u-nail. Now you can see why it is best to have a straight tree, so that your fencing doesn't bow out. Once you have finished pulling the fence tight and attaching it, move on to the next post and repeat the process. Attach it to every post or tree until you reach the end of your run. Now use your hog ringer to attach rings to the top wire. You should attach one every foot if you are using metal hexagrid and one every one and a half feet if you are using polypropylene. Alternatively, you can attach zip ties along the top and not use the hog ringer at all. However, if your fence is long, 
this can become a hassle to do. So fetch your mallet and ground stakes. Pull the fencing down and measure out your 6 inch flap. Lightly hammer a stake into the ground to hold the fencing in place. Move down your run of fence, putting in stakes about every 6 feet. Make sure that the stakes are put in at the same height on the fencing so that it will be pulled flat. When your stakes are in, your fence is done and you should have a sturdy, nearly invisible run of fencing before you. If you have any gates, then move on to the next video which outlines how to install them.